Hey there, you guys. I know it's been a really long time since we had some good old lists about the great eras of ninjas and samurai. Then that is why I am here today to change that and bring you a list of the top 10 samurai anime with violence and triple X. So for those with weak hearts of fear or graphic scenes in blood, I suggest you skip this video as we have a plentiful selection of other anime videos that could satisfy your needs. But before we begin, be sure to hit that subscribe button and press on that bell icon and set us all to be notified about all our latest new videos. And with that, let's begin. <laughs> Sometimes the journey we need to take isn't a physical one, sometimes all we actually need is a change of heart. And that's through the Blade of the Immortal. Manji, a samurai that knows nothing but killing, is one of those that will undergo such a journey. After killing a hundred innocent souls, his life took a turn to the worse after a witch cursed him with immortality. She placed a curse on him in the form of an insect embedded in his body and keeps healing him and curing his wounds no matter how life-threatening and severe. He just can't die. No matter what he does, the bug always regenerates him back to full health as if nothing had ever happened in the first place. And if he wants to regain his mortality, he needs to complete a task that will change his life forever. This task he is sent on is the mission of killing a thousand evil individuals, if he ever wishes to return to being a normal human being with a normal life. For a cold-blooded killer like him, adding some more notches to his blade is nothing. But is this mission of him only about killing? Or is he going to gain some new insight on life? Who knows? And up next we have Ninja Scroll. Now Ninja Scroll is a classic anime renowned for its graphic depiction of violence and intense action sequences. Gruesome battles and death scenes will be the least of your worries in this anime since it's chock full with them. Featuring lots of bloodshed, brutality as the protagonist, and, and Jubei Kibagami battles against formidable foes. The anime itself doesn't hold back on showcasing the consequences of combat. With characters meeting gruesome fates in the midst of the action-packed battles, it just can't get any more graphic than this. Each fight scene is meticulously animated with fluid movements and dynamic choreography that keep viewers glued to the screen, wondering what happens next. Who is going to gain the upper hand and what lies in store for them? Whether it is sword fights or supernatural powers, Ninja Scroll always delivers a relentless barrage of action that never lets up, keeping audiences engaged and thrilled from start to finish. With its combination of stunning animation and gripping storytelling, Ninja Scroll remains a staple of the action genre in anime, captivating audiences with its relentless intensity. And next up we have the story of a handful of exiles sent over to Tsushima Island to face imminent guaranteed death. This anime is Angomoi, Record of Mongol Invasion. Taking place in the year 1274, this was a time of great power and prosperity for the Mongols. After conquering almost all of the known world sacking, pillaging, and killing everyone and everything that stands in their way. A few handful of exiles stationed at Tsushima Island is all that stands between a full-scale Mongol invasion and Japan. Things might seem grim for the exiles, but they are ready to fight, die, and spill their enemy's blood as long as they know that dear Japan is safe. The fate of Tsushima Island lies in the balance, and with it, the fate of Japan as a country. However, these mighty exiles will soon prove their worth, and let's just say they will take the phrase, you shall not pass, to higher levels that no one could ever imagine. So you better watch this anime and enjoy all it can offer. I am telling you, it's an experience like none other. Now up next is our little anime of pest controlling samurai and his powerful task force of specialists equipped with secret techniques created for the sole reason of taking out these giant bugs. Mushi Bugyo. Killing bugs was never more fun than this. Though they might be giant in size, and some people might be disgusted by that, but still, squashing a bug got some charm to it, and it's pretty cool to watch. I mean, seriously, who wouldn't want to see a giant insect that could potentially devour five people in one gulp get slashed into two pieces just like that? In the Edo period, the population suffers from a lot of giant pest issues. It's an understatement to say that they have a bug problem. And that is why a magistrate is created to battle those monstrous bugs and defeat them. Each one of them has its own unique style and power, and there is the samurai, the ninja, the summoner, and many more each stronger than the first. And with these flashy skills they display, you are guaranteed to have one hell of an enjoyable time. 
And speaking of the etchy scenes in this anime, they just don't hold back either. So just be careful whoever you are watching this series, alright? Now this anime will take us back to the golden ages of samurai, and we head off to our next entree with some of the greatest historical figures in Japanese history. Going at it, duking against each other in hopes to topple one another, and this anime I'm talking about is the one and the only Sengoku Basara, Samurai Kings. For those who don't know Sengoku Basara, it's an over-exaggerated version of the Sengoku period, specifically during the era of feudal Japan. Take it as the Japanese version of Dynasty Warriors, and just like Dynasty Warriors, these characters have some abilities that would make gods drop their jaws to the floor. And these great historical figures are out for one another, each equipped with their wits, their strengths, and insane abilities, and of course, their armies. I mean, what kind of feudal lord are you if you don't have an army, am I right? And one more thing, remember how Zoro from One Piece broke all the norms by using Santori. Well, in the series, there's a character, I won't say specifically who, they use not three, not four, and not even five swords. This character uses six freaking swords in ways you wouldn't even imagine that would be possible. This is just one of the insane things this anime has to offer, so if you want to unravel the secrets of the show, then you know where to watch it. Now we take a small trip to the hood, leaving Japan behind a pay to visit one of the most powerful and iconic samurai in anime. It is none other than Afro Samurai. Revenge is such a fickle feeling that can control your life, completely setting you on a journey and there is no coming back from it. It can consume you whole if you let it. It is true that revenge can consume a person's life and control it entirely, dragging them into the lowest pits of hatred and rage. Afro Samurai is no stranger when it comes to revenge. He has been living his whole life for one reason after all, and the death of his father took a great toll on him as a child, and as he grew up he swore to not let anyone overpower him or defeat him in any way possible. He became a very powerful and skilled swordsman, climbing the ranks all the way until he claimed the number two bandana. His path to vengeance was far from over, however. So far, yet so close, he could taste the blood of his enemy. One thing he didn't account for, however, was the big-ass bullseye mark the number two bandana had placed on him. After all, only number two could challenge number one, but everyone else can challenge the number two, and we all know where this is headed by now. Let's just say that this is going to be an epic battle for the ages. And at long last, it is time for one of my and fan favorite anime out there. This anime is one of the best anime ever when it comes to story, character arcs, unique art style, and of course, the reason we are all gathered here for today, it's graphic violence. Oh hell no. Give it up to the greatest timeless battle between Ninja, Basilisk. Now, Basilisk is a dark and gripping anime that delves into themes of love, betrayal, and the consequences of war. Set in feudal Japan, it tells the story of two ninja clans that we have grown familiar to through many other anime as they have grown to become staples of the ninja genre. The Iga and the Koga who are locked in deadly conflict fighting each other in their secret wars led by their feudal lords in hopes of tipping the scales of the current war for dominance in each other's favor. Now the anime features numerous scenes that are both messed up and terrifying to say the least, which is exactly why this series is on this list, showcasing the brutal nature of the ninja world from gruesome battles where characters are mutilated and killed in horrific ways to the psychological torment experienced by the protagonists as they grapple with their loyalty to the cause and their personal ambitions and desires. Basilisk enjoys displaying the darker aspects of human nature and just how messed up humans can actually be. Some scenes are particularly disturbing, such as characters being forced to confront their deepest fears or facing the consequences of their actions in chilling and unsettling ways. This anime was the definition of going above and beyond when it came to the gore and horror material. And overall, Basilisk is a harrowing and unforgettable viewing experience for those brave enough to witness its darkness. And up next we have House of Five Leaves. Now what if there was an anime, an anime about samurai, and this anime wasn't about the strongest samurai or the path to glory or even a demon sword, but instead it was about meek 
looking samurai with slightly above average skills. He wasn't looking to fight the strongest fight or defeat the overlord and free his people, but maybe he was just looking to make his living and help his little sister back at home. That would be, if not anything, interesting. And that's exactly what Saraya Goyo, House of the Five Leaves, is about. And this anime isn't for those who live to see explosions and special effects, and isn't even for people who want to see some fighting scenes. There's only about two or three in the entire series, and for an anime that has its main protagonist as a bodyguard, it's pretty strange. This anime, however, is just that. It's all about the story, rather than the battles and the fights. Now, the anime that I was waiting for, one of my favorite series ever with one of the coolest characters in anime. Of course, I am talking about none other than Drifters. Toyohisa Shimazu is undeniably one of my favorite anime characters out there, and for all the good reasons too. He is a bona fide five-star samurai that is prepared to greet death like an old friend with no fears or regrets. As well as his kick-ass fighting style after a one-man army battle holding the line for his allies just to retreat, he meets his end by the swords of his enemies, but not before having his fill of killing and decapitating his foes. He awakens to find a weird guy talking to him in a room with a lot of doors only to drag him inside one of these said doors and plunge him into a war he didn't ask for. However, if there is anything he is good at, it is war. Now, with Toyohisa being in his main element, his opponents will wish they had never met him in the first place. Ever since the first episode, this series immediately hooked all who watched it and took them by surprise at just how freaking good the anime was. The violence, the battles, the plotting. It was perfect. Perfect. Everything, down to the last minute details. Sadly, however, the studio decided to cancel the series altogether. And honestly, this was the only bad thing when it came to the series. And I said it before, I'll say it again. I challenge anyone to find a fault or bad thing when it comes to this anime. Even though it might only be a movie, it still solidified its place as a great contender on this list, and thus ending up being the number one pick for today without further ado, and that anime in the number one spot is Sword of the Stranger. Sword of the Stranger was an unexpected success that no one saw coming when the movie released. It is both unusual and refreshing in a way that it seemed to come out of nowhere and prove to be a remarkable anime becoming a staple of anime movies. The premise of the story wasn't anything special either. It was a linear story of an unexpected hero rising. You know, the usual when it comes to such shows. And somehow, though, the movie did much better in telling its story and was captivating, engaging, and fun enough to attract that big of an audience to watch it and enjoy it. The main character, Kotaro, and his dog, Tobimaru, are being hunted by the Ming Dynasty for some reason, and he is being tracked and tailed everywhere, all by assassins that want to kill him and hunt him wherever he goes. And luckily for him, he meets a ronin called Nanashi in his dire moment. With him being injured and his dog poisoned, the adventure of this trio and their escape from the Ming Dynasty is such a wonderful thing to witness and watch. And even though it's a movie, it is quite fun and interesting with lots of action and the character development throughout the movie is just mwah, chef's kiss. And with that, we reach the final chapter of this video and as it comes to a close, I just hope that you guys had fun watching this video as much as I had fun making it for you all. And as always, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment down below the names of the anime you believe should have been on this list, as well as what you'll be watching soon. And as for now, I'll catch you later. See you in the next one.